49ers star wide receiver Brandon Ayuk is back in the Bay. We hope. What does that mean for the San Francisco 49ers? What does that mean for Brandon Ayuk? We got that. We got the preview to training camp on its way. We got Brock Purdy's camp that went underway this past weekend. And last but not least, we're going to talk about 49ers rookie Ricky Pearsall and his rookie contract. All that and more right here live on the Wayne Breezy Show. So stick around. So bright that we shine at. All we do is the night at. Ready to go, let us find us. So faithful to the bay. What's going on, 49 and Faithful? It's your boy Wayne Breezy. Welcome to the Wayne Breezy Show. We're episode 208. Enjoying this wonderful off season. I call it like the break fast because pretty soon we'll be breaking fast once training camp gets underway. All right, so let's get right down to it. 49ers wide receiver Brandon IU. <laughs> Gotta make some noise for the IU. Wait, check this out. He's on. A jet plane. Say it with me. Leaving on a jet plane. I don't know if I'll be back again. Name that movie. All right. I tell you what. Brandon Ayuk has been seen on, you know, and this is at Sammy Sutton Jet Set Bay Area, California. Now, is he leaving Cali? Is he returning to Cali? Did he just land in Cali? Looks like his son is there. Brandon Ayuk. With his big dogs just chilling in his son's face. I wonder if his son is trying to say that dad's feet smell like them chili Fritos he eating up there. He holding up there. You know what I'm saying? So, look, I don't know. Uh, I see the Fiji water. I'm trying to get all the nuggets and, and the spoilers and all that good stuff out of this one pick. One thing I know is a private jet. Whose private jet is this? Well, I tell you what, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't say Jed York's account, private jet. Could it be Jed York's private jet? Could the 49ers have flown? Brandon Ayuk back out to the Bay. I thought Brandon Ayuk lived in the Bay. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I know he wants to play in the Bay. Uh, I, I, that I do know. Um, but at the end of the day, Brandon Ayuk is in the Bay. So what does this mean? We don't know. We, we Look, I'll tell you what. You got the reports that came out this past week about Brandon Ayuk per Mike Silver saying that the 49ers offered $26 million. I could have swore I read... A, a, a something, I'm not saying it was a report, but I did read something saying that the 49ers even offered Brandon Ayuk $28.5 million, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the deal, right? Is, is that That's that deal that Brandon Ayuk was looking for, that Amon Ross St. Brown deal from the Detroit uh, Lions. Mm. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff to kind of like break down, you know, and, and you know what, I tell you what, there's so many questions that you got to ask yourself when it comes to Brandon Ayuk. And I know everybody, especially the faithful, is tired of talking about it. You know, a lot of people feel like the $26 million is a fair offer. I'm one of those people. I feel like it's fair. I'm not saying that's what he should get paid. I feel like that's the fair offer from the, the San Francisco 49ers. When I broke it down into what the franchise tag is next year, which is a little bit under that $26 million per year, it's 25 and some change. You know, which the Niners can do in 2025, so they can't franchise tag him. He would make less. So if I'm Brandon Ayuk, and if I well, if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, I feel like this is a pretty fair offer. Don't know the rest of the terms of what was discussed uh, behind the doors or whatever. We just know that that offer of 26 million was in. Now, if the offer of 28 five million is in there, th this could kind of kind of get down to the nitty gritty to where Brandon Ayuk may be sounding a little bit greedy but then you got to factor in brandon now you got to factor in who he is what he does for the team uh back-to-back 1000 -back yard wide receivers and here's the key right he's a back-to-back 1000 -back yard wide receiver not utilized as the number one option i i, I don't know how to re like how else you can reward that other with with good pay and so you know the niners they're gonna go back and forth listen you ain't you ain't him you ain't him you ain't him and this camp is gonna be like when i say him i'm like justin jefferson tyreek hill um the, you know the top paid guys and then when you go back brandon i is gonna say well you don't throw me the ball like him and him <laughs> but when you do throw me the ball this is what i do bam and then you get these stats and you're just like wow wow right average yard per catch he's number one in the league in that you know 
but as far as yards, uh, overall yards, as far as receiving yards, it's not, you know, he's, he's, he's a little bit down there on the list. But, you know, I tell you what, I do know, I do know that, you know, and this was before uh, Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport spoke about it. I do know that the San Francisco 49ers want Brandon Ayuk here. So whoever came out and said that the 49ers didn't want him here, well, excuse me, that was Brandon Ayuk. He put out the video uh, when he was FaceTiming Jalen Daniels, uh, his former teammate over at Arizona, um, and he put out that video, and it was so funny because it was just like, you know, he was just, yeah, we all agreed that the video was staged or whatnot. But he put out that video and said, you know, they don't want me back, whatever, whatever. And I, and I was like, yeah, they, they don't want you back at the number you're probably asking for. The, the question is, what the hell is the number Brandon Ayuk is asking for? Because if Brandon Ayuk is asking for higher than, you know, the Justin Jefferson deal, Woohoo, we baby, baby. That's a lot of money. Like, you know what I mean? Like, good Lord, that's a lot of money. Now, no, I'm not saying he ain't better than Justin Jefferson. Matter of fact, check out one of our, one of the former episodes of the BAM show. I believe myself, my, Mike and I, we, we broke down like the value and what these wide receivers do. They're in the same draft class, but we broke that down. And I, I thought that was one of the best, you know, <laughs> one of the best uh, shows that we covered uh, when we broke down their money. I thought that was like, like broke down their stats and stuff like that. And as far as money, now listen, Justin Jefferson is the guy, uh, but Brandon Ayuk hasn't been made the guy in San Francisco. That's the crazy part, right? Like he's not, he hasn't been made the guy. So when you look at Brandon Ayuk, you ask yourself, man, what is this guy worth? And if he's a top ten wide receiver, then you definitely got to pay him as a top ten wide receiver. But if Brandon Ayuk's coming in saying, hey, man, I'm top five, I think that's arguably, I think that's a great argument for Brandon Ayuk to say that he's top five. And then you break down, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you start to look at, like, well, what did Brandon Ayuk do? What did he not do? Like, you, like he produced. He produced not even as the number one option. I can't, I can't not hang my hat on that, man. You know what? I tell you what. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Brandon Ayuk, is he a top five receiver? He's definitely top 10. So if you feel like he's not a top 10 wide receiver, please send me a private message and your reasoning. I need to know why, but he's definitely a top 10, uh, top five wide receiver, or a top 10 wide receiver. But I think he's top five in my books. And, and, and it's just because of what he's able to do with the football in his hands is what he's able to do as far as creating separation and getting open. We talk about guys that can run the route tree. I mean, those guys come a dime a dozen. There might be literally 12 great route runners in the NFL, and Brandon Ayuk is one of them, and you're going to pay for route runners. It's like, yeah, you're going to pay for top receivers, but you're hoping your top receivers can do certain things, not just line up in the slot and win the mismatches all single day, getting open, doing slants. But lining up outside, lining up in the backfield, can they play the X, Y, and the Z? Can they be, like, not just play them, like, are they are they good at them? Like, you know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting to see um, how this continues to pan out. Now, listen, again, if I go back to this photo real quickly, quick, quick, Brandon Ayuk, Bay Area, that's the location that's tagged in here. I'm sorry, that's a private jet. I only see two seaters in one row, right? Two seaters in a row, right? Like, so is the guy in the backpack, and then it's Brandon Ayuk. Uh, there's two seats. I don't know. I see six seats, maybe four seats, four seats, six seats, whatever. I, I feel like I see six seats. But whose jet is this? That's a question that I'm asking myself, and is he leaving the bay or is he back in the bay? I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk being back in the bay, baby, because that's the way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like it. Brandon Ayuk back in the bay. And this can only mean great news for the San Francisco 49ers. And Brandon Ayuk. Now, listen, he could be back in the bay and, and they're trying to and they're, and they're starting to like kind of like pick back up with the contract negotiations. That's all this could be. I remember Nick Bosa last year being uh, like in a specific place and the deal didn't get done to like six weeks later. Like, <laughs> so it's crazy. Now, listen, my expectations. And, and let me, I'll tell you what, let me ask you, you know, we, we talk about it all the time, but is Brandon Ayuk, 
Is he going to sign in the month of July, the month of August, the month of September, or later? July, August, September, or later? Later meaning before the trade deadline. That would be crazy. <laughs> ah, man. Interesting stuff. So let me know what you guys think. Brandon and I use back in the Bay. I think that's some good stuff to, to hang our hats on. It's only positive stuff that you can go from here, right? Like, I mean, it can get it can get nasty. It can get nasty. Let's talk about training camp because training camp's coming up soon. You got the rookies um, reporting July 16th, okay, 2024. Don't know what made me want to say 2023, but uh, 2024 is the year that we're currently in. So, yeah, 2024. Um, and then you got the veterans, if I'm not mistaken, uh, reporting on July 23rd. I think I, I think I got those dates right. I hope those dates are right. Um, if not, it's the 17th and the 23rd, but I feel like it's the other way because it's seven days after. So 16th and the 23rd. So the rookies will be there, man. The rookies will be there early. People will be like, well, why do the rookies got to go a weekend early? Because they're rookies. They need all the extra time they could get. You know, they went through the phases and all that type of stuff, and, and, and now you got to continue to go through the installs, you know, and, and things like that. And, and they want a head start. So it's, it's almost like, you know, being... A, a kid and then you go to head start before you go to you know kindergarten or preschool or whatever it has head start the same thing as preschool it's the same thing you know as a rookie you know you're coming out of college and it's hard to really make that transition depending on the system that you go to and what your your role and your responsibility is and the 49ers have several rookies that they want to get equipped as well as the undrafted free agents that they want to really get some fine tuning in and on before it gets over flooded or overcrowded with the veterans that's not trying to allow the rookies to take their spot so you know the rookies will get that full week of install and it's all about them and they got to be on top of this stuff and getting that playbook and and things like that so it's going to be interesting that first week you know what i'm saying first week very interesting just to see which rookies are standing out there won't be any pads as far as i'm concerned they'll be in uniform but they won't be hitting and stuff like that you know what i'm saying not until and not until the the vets get there and, and they get their conditioning in and it's always the first two weeks is like always like i always call conditioning you know what i'm saying so the good thing for the rookies is they'll be conditioned quicker than the veterans right because they'll be there for a full week they'll they'll be doing the running the stadiums i'm thinking all the stuff i did back in high school right they'll be doing all that type of stuff they'll have a week ahead to where some of the veterans are gonna have to come and uh get their win back um uh you know what i'm saying so uh and then the veterans return on the on the 23rd which i think is the week after and you're gonna get your vets now Everything is mandatory at this time. There's, there's, you know, so if you don't make it, you, you get docked, right? And so you're getting docked. And the question, ultimate question is, you know, which of those veterans will probably not be there? And I think the only one I can probably say, depending on the contract negotiations, uh, is, is uh, for their star receiver, Brandon Ayuk. I, I, he, he may not be there um, practicing. Uh, it would be interesting if he shows up and attends, but I, I'm i already bracing myself for Brandon Ayuk not to be at the first two weeks of camp um, as they work on the contract negotiations. Now, you're probably like, well, dang, the first two weeks, dang, you're going to be going into August. Yep, that's about right. I don't even expect Brandon Ayuk to play preseason football. Like that, That's the month of August. He doesn't have to play. Like Brandon Ayuk don't need to be out there playing preseason fo football, but now I do want him out there getting into f football shape 49er football shape on top of that so but we'll, again we'll see what happens with the contract negotiations um um you know what i mean so who do i have my eyes on my, my eyes are watching that's going to be the title of this segment my eyes are watching so we'll start with a couple of the rookies um i'm gonna go one offensive one defensive guy uh and so you let me know what you guys think to in the comment section as well um who are your eyes watching all right i would love to know 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with hmm, training camp. I got to go with the first round pick, uh, Ricky Pearsall, right? Because, you know, all off season so far, he's been in a blue non-contact football jersey. Hopefully he'll be in a regular jersey and a, a little bit of contact. Maybe you can touch him, try to jam him up off the line of scrimmage. Um, but for me, um, it's going to be Ricky Pearsall. And this is the, the this is the opportunity to find out where he may fit in. And it's funny because the two players that I'm going to pick from the rookies are the two of the deepest positions for the San Francisco 49ers. So I went with the wide receiver position, right, and Ricky Pearsall. Um, and, and I want to see. I want to see him, like, you know, break open, find, like, like what his footwork looks like when there's a little bit of contact and people and he can be touched and things like that. Plus, he's a first-round pick, so I'm expecting him to be able to do a lot of these things. And how quickly is he grasp, grasping the playbook? That's most important. That's, that's the main reason why these rookies are there early, right? Because that's overload time, right? They need to be able to show that they can. They got the concepts right. They they can execute properly. All those different types of things that the 49ers rookies are going to need to do. And, and if I'm not mistaken, the 49ers probably have the hardest training camp out there, like literally. Like it's Kyle Shanahan's playbook. We already know Kyle Shanahan has that. You know, that beautiful mind. I don't know if I'm allowed to reference that movie. Uh, I won't say the actor's name, but yeah, like he's he's just has a mind. Right. <laughs> and it's crazy. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how how this works. Uh, but I, I'm definitely got my eyes on Ricky Pierce. So don't get mad if I'm not saying Jacob. Con I expect Jacob Conway to go out there and just ball out. And Tariq Owens. Like, I, I think they're they're going to naturally go out there and ball out. But I'm watching Pearsall. I'm, I'm, I'm watching his every move as a first-round draft pick. And don't take any type of, 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 of whatever you I'm not I'm not throwing shade. I'm not coming at this kid. No, no. I just want to see if he's able to do some of the things. Where would they line him up? I love the draft pick because I love the versatility from Ricky Pearsall and what the 49ers can do. I talked about getting players that are versatile, and I also talked about having a wide receiver that can play the X, the Y, and the Z. X is outside. They can line them up outside, right? The, 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 the Y is the slot. Can he play in the slot? And then the Z is can he line up in the backfield and do damage out of the backfield? So I believe Ricky Pearsall can do those things. He has great speed. But let's see what it's like when he's going to get a little bit of pressure on him. Renardo Green is my defensive player. I know everybody is salivating at the mouth of, of Malik Mustafa, which I just think he's going to be the stud, right? But I want to see Renardo Green in action because he's got to go up against Ricky Pearsall. I want to see that. That's that's the matchup <laughs> I want to see. My, my, my first round draft pick and my second round draft pick going head to head. And, and when they're allowed to, because I don't think they're allowed to do a lot of one on one stuff, but because uh, of the, the, the CBA. But I, and them and them 11 on 11s, I want that to be the matchup that I do, you know, and, and the seven on sevens. I want that to be the matchup. So we'll see what's going to happen. Um, you know, I think Renardo Green's probably been having one of the best camps, especially per his coaches. Uh, defensive coordinator Nick Sorsen talks very highly of Renardo Green and. And how quickly and how efficiently and effectively, excuse me, is he making the transition at the nickelback spot? Because I believe that's where they want him to play. And so we're going to get hands on experience because now, you know, whether they line him up outside, if Pierce was outside, will he be the guy on Pierce? Will if Pierce moves to the slot, will he go to the slot on Pierce? Or will he have to defend other types of wide receivers in the slot? So we're gonna see what Renardo Green can do, uh cornerback rookie second round pick out of Florida State, right? So I'm I'm excited to see those two guys, your number one and your number two pick. And it, it just happened to be that they happen to be number one and two but I talked about the two rooms that I love, you know what I'm saying, um, which I think are the deepest rooms. I think are the deepest rooms. So my eyes will be watching. My eyes are watching Ricky Pearsall, first-round pick, Florida. Wait a minute. This is crazy. 
and then <laughs> and then second round pick Renato Green out of Florida State. Wow. So my eyes are watching Florida. Period. Whether it's the state or whether it's Florida, school wise, they both in Florida State. You get what I'm saying. All right, so those are those are who I'm watching as far as rookies. The vets are going to come back, and I, I could tell you right now, <sighs> which vets am I watching? It's not going to be the the kind of the the, the normal average vets, uh, the ones that you already know um, are going to do their due diligence, like your Fred Warners, your George Kittles, your Debo Samuels, your Trent Williams, this, this is, your Nick Bosa's. Those aren't the guys that I'm watching. Uh, but I will say that I'm going to be watching uh, a defensive specialist vet, uh, and I'm going to be watching free agent Leonard Floyd. Um, I'm, I'm hoping he comes with a cr with a vicious bark, I mean bite. Excuse me. I want the bark to be great, but I want that bite to be vicious. Uh, he's going to be lining up uh, opposite Nick Bosa starting, and the question is, how will the 49ers try to utilize him? Do they have enough depth? Uh, to keep his energy uh, on on, a, on level 100 at all times. I believe that's what he is. That's how he's been utilized throughout his career. And he's been able to produce in that way. So my thing is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If this guy's been giving you almost double-digit sacks just about every season in the NFL due to the way that he's been utilized, I hope that they don't change that. But I'm hoping that he comes in with a crazy high motor, crazy vicious bite, like ferocious bark, and he just balls out, right? Like he just balls out in camp. Uh, to, to give the 49ers the edge, no pun intended, that they need on that defensive line, right? Because that's key, right? I think I think the edge is where we struggled. We couldn't generate a lot of pressure. I know we're trying to get pressure up the middle. Um and some people may disagree, man. Let me know, like, what you guys think, too. I, I want to see what Leonard Floyd can do. If I had to pick a runner-up on the defensive line, it'd be, uh, it'd be Javon Hargrave. I want to see what he's able to do. Uh, he slimmed down a little bit. Looks like he got he's more into the 49er football shape, as I like to say. Uh, being on that uh, defensive front where he's got to be able to stop the run and rush the passer, and they're paying him a lot of money. So if you picked him, Leonard Floyd, it's all good. Matter of fact, let me know what you think. Do you feel it's Leonard Floyd more that the eyes are watching, which is the newbie? Or is it going to be Javon Hargrave, the guy who was already here and has, has gotten that contract and is and is looking to, to, to show and prove? Like, who are your eyes watching, Leonard Floyd or Javon Hargrave? So that's my defensive guy. Offensively, um, you know, the Niners, they didn't make too many changes offensively. I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. We already know, uh, you know, you know what, what these guys can do. I got to go with the obvious one, though, because I feel like the pressure is just on this particular person, not just because he plays the most important position in the NFL, but. It's just who he is and where he was drafted. So I'm going to go with quarterback Brock Purdy. I think my eyes are going to be on him because I'm hearing nothing but great things. I'm hearing how he changed his body composition. I'm hearing how he got stronger. I'm hearing all these different things, and I'm just curious to see what Brock Purdy has done to get better, right? Because every year he's going to need to come in here and prove himself not just to the faithful not just to the team but to the whole world like it's just what it is seventh round draft pick last pick in the draft it's like you're always going to be proving yourself even even when you and just think about this even with brock purdy right wins the super bowl right 2024 nfl champions they win the super bowl right now he's going to get his contract extension and then you know what they're going to ask? They're going to say, can he live up to this contract extension? Is Brock Purdy worth being paid the highest paid quarterback in the league? That, 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 it's like, dang, like it's never going to end for Brock Purdy. Uh, but maybe that's the drive he needs to continue to push himself, you know, that 1% or 2% more each and every season that he goes out there. And I'm not going to front, like – I would like to see Brock Purdy on some type of quarterback runs. The kid is athletic as hell. Now, I'm not saying I want him to run half uh, quarterback power runs up the middle. No, those should be ex 
excommunicated, exiled out of Kyle Shanahan's playbook. We already seen what happened to a quarterback that you spent a lot of cat draft capital on uh, running quarterback powers. But I mean, there there could be some type of where we bring back the read option. I mean, it's highly effective still today in the NFL, and you got to have a certain skill set to run it. How well can you read the end? Do you hold on to the ball? Do you hand it off? And I think the 49ers offensive unit is just amazing, but I think it starts with Brock, and the better he gets, the better the offense gets as a whole. And I'm not saying Brock was terrible, but there are definitely areas he can work on. I still think Brock holds on to the ball like sometimes a little too long, right? Uh, he doesn't get through all of his progressions, but that could be that not that might not be on Brock, all right? That may not be on Brock. That may be on what was designed and called, and he's just trying to execute what he is told to execute. So that's a whole nother conversation. But I like Brock Purdy. I lo- excuse me. I love Brock Purdy, and I'm excited to see what he brings to camp. Is he going to come into camp and, you know, they believe that he's this leader and all that good stuff, but is he going to come into camp to where he's got some tricks up his sleeve where he's going to be able to ookie dookie my man Fred Warner and, and Traverius Mooney Ward and those those veteran guys out there that are going to be salivating at the mouth to get back on the football field, especially when they put the pads on and they're able to have some type of contact. Uh, but can Brock Purdy be a guy to deceive this top? Top tier defense and I think that's what helps make Brock makes Brock Purdy better right the fact that you're going up against a top five defense in the NFL they're still top one to me I don't care where they finished last year but the 49ers man they are a tough defense right and so I'm gonna tell you right now Brock if you throw 100 interceptions in practice and training camp make sure you get them all out of your system in training camp because you can be playing against the top defense and I would like to see Brock take more risks right take some risks he took some last season and they were kind of successful right i know kyle shanahan didn't like them uh but damn kyle a couple of them went for touchdowns i don't think any of them went for interceptions so if he's going to take some risks you know i would like to see him do it mainly in practice uh so he can get he can iron out the kinks and be more accurate with his throws and his timing come regular season uh with Brandon Ayuk possibly not being out there, I want to see how Brock elevates the other guys. I know Debo Samuel is still that guy, but Kenny and George Kittle is that guy. But now you got a bunch of other guys, other wide receivers that Brock, I believe, can help elevate. So my eyes will be on Brock and those who I will be watching come training camp. Now we'll see if that tra- that changes over time or whatnot. Speaking of Brock Purdy, let's get to his camp. Brock Purdy uh, had a camp in Iowa. Um, you know, where he was out there. And he said some really good things, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it, it was cool um, to, to be with the fans and all that good stuff. And I'm happy for Brock Purdy because he's definitely looked at as one of the, you know, premier QBs, <laughs> men of all time. And I, and I think this is great for Brock. You know, he's going out there um, and, and doing special things with the kids and he's continuing to find ways to learn. Right. And I think that's what makes Brock special. Right. He talked about this and this was a quote. This was a quote. Uh, he talked about this. Uh, it was like uh, Brock Purdy doesn't consider himself a finished product uh, and knows there is still much work ahead if he wants to continue proving his doubters wrong much of that involves continuing the to master the 49ers offensive system because that's what it is it's a system and he has to figure out how to you know defeat the levels you know maybe maybe first year he was on easy second year you switched it to you know you know novice and now now you're going to put it on most difficult all right or in all madden's terms all madden um but here's the quote it's just a playbook continuing to chip away at that getting more familiar with it pretty sheared quote it's like another language like i always say so you've got to always be in it and then physically just my mobility i didn't even know i didn't even read this pre and and hopefully uh being able to translate that to being quicker and more elusive things like that i can always continue to get better in that regard it's funny because i just spoke on areas that i thought brock could improve in and i didn't read this article per 49ers web zone too by the way shout out to 49ers web zone uh and i didn't read it 
And I was just like, oh, I'm, that's something I wanted to talk about on today's episode. So <laughs> Brock Purdy just came out and said he wants to be more elusive, um, you know, and 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 and, and kind of like running the ball. Like that's cra- his mobility. And it's not just about like, like, like I said, running the ball. It's like him just being mobile, keeping extending plays, keeping drives alive. Sort of kind of the way you watch them play against the Detroit Lions in the NFC Championship game. I want more of that, Brock, right? Because I could tell you right now, each and every week, there's going to be a plan to attack Brock Purdy. Each and every week. It's a test. It's literally football games are a test. Every week, the test is more difficult. Sometimes it can be easy. It all depends on how well Brock prepares through for for uh, during practice, the week of, and things like that. But this test, he has to go out there and prove it. And now it's crazy because it's not just on Brock. It's on the other 10 guys on offense. The offensive line has to block. The other guys have to be in their, their right spots. They got to move like a unit. Brock has to make sure that his, offensive, his offense moves like a unit each and every single week. And then we didn't even factor any of the adversity that may happen, right? And then on top of that, then is your defense, right? Your defense has to be on point on the opposite end. You want your defense to be able to give you the ball back so that you can have more opportunities to go out there and execute. So Brock Purdy, salute to you, my guy. Thanks for doing great work. And there was a little clip I think I wanted to play from your camp. I can see him working on that mobility right there, shuffling the feet. I hate to say it, but but Brock got that swag. It's like that cool swag, sort of kind of like a former 49 quarterback that was kind of cool calm and collected back there greatest quarterback of all time ring a bell he just got that swag i i I don't i don't know how much swag joe montana had because i didn't really get to know joe um like you get to know the players of today just due to social media and stuff like that joe was cool though i can tell you that he was cool calm and collected but brock it's cool, calm, and collected with swag. Like, I don't know if swag is even a, a good word, but that's what it is. Like he's just got he's got he's got something. I think Brock has something. So you know, shout out to Brock and his camp. And shout out to all the football uh players, especially the San Francisco 49ers, that put on these camps for these children to attend, uh, so they can get a chance to work. That's nothing like working out with your 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 favorite athletes. You know, I, I wish I wish the players would do a camp for, you know, the 40 and up club. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you 40 and up the 40, 40 club, I, like, I'm, I'm, you know, what? 49er players, you watching this episode. Why don't y'all start a 40, 40 club where you got to be 40 and up and then we could come out and we could kind of work out. You know what I'm saying? Because our, our knees and our ACLs are a little bit different than the little kids. Uh, you might have to have a bunch of uh, medical staff there on site. That might be a little bit costly. But at the end of the day, man, if we sign waivers or whatever, I would love to attend a camp, not just to get a chance to to meet our favorite players, but so I could bust y'all asses. Because I, I feel like I can outwork out any one of these players straight up. I was supposed to bleep that out, but my bad. It's late. I couldn't find the button. So, uh, like, if y'all up for that challenge, let me know. I'll sign up in a heartbeat to come out there for a chance to bust that. All right. So, the, hey, congratulations to Brock Purdy. Speaking of Brock Purdy, we were talking about our rookie uh, let's talk about Ricky Pearsall because um, the full breakdown, I tell you what, I'm going to do a video on the Patreon for the full breakdown um, of this contract. But he finally was able to get the deal done um, and we'll go through the deal. And then I'll kind of like, you know, for the Patreon, I'll do like that full breakdown um, um of the deal all right so you guys can get a better understanding of how how it's going to work down per year all that good stuff so four-year deal worth up to 12.54 million dollars all right so for the four years now 
people are like, that's it? That's all he's getting? His 31st pick, man. Like, this is why, you you know, you, you're hoping, you know, by the grace of God, you A, you want to get drafted in the first round because that's where you make the most money. Right? That's where you make the most the most money uh, first round. But um, you get drafted in that first round. I mean, the money is always going to be higher. And in the, 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 the lower rounds you get drafted, the least amount of money you're going to get. Because when you look at Brock Purdy's, you know, deal, it was it was it was a four year deal for about three, almost not even four million dollars. And that's because he was picked 262. So, you know, these rookie contracts, you know, are good for the team because they're relatively at that discounted rate, you know what I'm saying, for at least four years. At least four years. And then you get into the realms because look at where Brandon Ayuk is. He's, he, and, 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 and the good thing for Ricky, being a first-round pick, the Niners can exercise the fifth-year option on him, whereas if you were not drafted in the first round, it's just a four-year deal. I believe that's what took so long to get this contract signed to, by the way. It's that fifth-year option language. Like, where is that number going to be in five years? Like, where do, they, where do they guesstimate the number to be in five years for the San Francisco 49ers? Uh, and I'm not sure if the receiver gets to agree upon that number. It's a possibility. I'm not sure. We know this year's number for the fifth year option for the wide receiver position was 14 point one something million dollars. That's what Brandon Ayuk is going to make this particular season. All right. So Brandon Ayuk. Now five years from now, after you know the fourth full season, the 49ers will be able to exercise the fifth year option on wide receiver. Ricky Pearsall, all right, wide receiver Ricky Pearsall. Now, um, just just a quick just a quick breakdown, quick quick breakdown. I'll do a full one, um, or, or whatever. So when you look at it, you're looking at his numbers. His base salary is going to be this year seven hundred ninety five thousand. All right, his base salary for two thousand twenty five. This is where it goes up, and see, it gets it gets a little bit, a little bit. It increases a little more each year. All right, each year. Then we just talk about base salary, all right? The prorated signing bonus is divided up, uh, you know, on, on on the four years of the contract, all right? That's what, you know, whatever he, the signing bonus was. It's going to be divided up. Uh, but uh, this is a fully guaranteed deal, which is I think is dope, right? So the money is fully guaranteed for him. Uh, again, his base salary and the guaranteed salary he'll get 2025 is 795000 Ricky Pierce was going to make more money, I think, than Brock Purdy. It might be the same, but I know Brock Purdy's in the seven hundred thousand category. Ricky Pierce in two thousand twenty-four is going to make more money than Brock Purdy. I, I believe. I believe. All right, that's crazy, right? Crazy to think. All right, so two thousand twenty-five, he'll make a million three. Two thousand twenty-six, and uh, uh, one point nine million, and then two thousand twenty-seven, two point five million. All right. And so that's that's that number. So, you know, the salary cap number is going to be twelve point five million dollars fully guaranteed. All right. And so Ricky Pearsall will be a 49er at least for the next four years, possibly that fifth year. We'll see what happens uh, with Ricky Pearsall. And, and look, this is great. And I'm, you know, everybody was probably a little upset drafting Ricky Pearsall. Um, or drafting a wide receiver, not Ricky, not you, Ricky. It's just the, it was the position. Uh, I think a lot of people were a little upset with the 49ers in drafting uh, just at that position when they felt like there were other needs. I wonder if the Niners have – I feel like the Niners have figured out, like, how to keep their team flowing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they know that Brandon I use at, 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 at this – crossroads with the contract negotiations so they replenish with another first round wide receiver just like they did Brandon Ayuk four years ago and now they start the process or start the clock over just in case things don't work out against Brandon Ayuk they got Debo Samuel this year and next year under contract all right they got Debo Samuel this year and next year under contract all right so that's that's something great um you know but it's oh it's, it's about what the nine it's about them replenishing the position and kind of resetting the money, sort of, kind of. And they're hoping to get the same, if not greater, production 
from the player at the position that they chose if that makes sense if that makes sense they had you know and remember and that and that draft was that 2020 right that year they got Brandon Ayuk. You gotta remember, like that they that he was the second first round pick for the San Francisco 49ers. He was their second first round pick. Remember, Javon Kinlaw was their first. And they didn't they didn't exercise the fifth year option on Kinlaw, but they made sure that they did on Brandon Ayuk to give them some time, to buy them some time, hopefully to get the deal done. Will the deal get done with Brandon Ayuk? My answer is yes. I'm not even gonna guess it. I already know it's gonna get done. The question is really gonna come down to when. And again, if you're just tuning into the show, don't forget. When do you think this deal is going to get done? Will it be in July? Let's omit June. June is just about over. We got like six days left of June. All right. But it's funny because he's back in. I tell you what, let's change it up. Let's add June. Six days to go in June. When will this deal get done? We got June. We got July. We got August. And we got September. Do you remember? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section of the show. All right. Make sure you guys like this joint. And don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time watching the, the show. Make sure you subscribe to the Wayne Breezy Show. Hit that bell. All right. So that way your alerts are set to all and you don't miss any of the content that I have going on here. Yes, I'm covering basketball now. I know a lot of people are like, what is this Celtics stuff? Listen, congratulations to my Boston Celtics because they are champions. But yes, I'm going to be doing that uh, once a week. We've got a bunch of shows that's going to be going on, but I truly appreciate you guys for tuning in. Guess what, guys? Y'all got to remain faithful, stay faithful, always be faithful. If you're from the Bay, keep it faithful to the Bay. If you're not from the Bay, represent faithful to the Bay. However it is you choose, you want to do it, baby. I'm your boy, Wayne Breezy. Again, thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Wayne Breezy Show. Until the next time, baby, we out this joint. So right that we shine All we do is the On the rocks and a 24 karat gold on a watch. My 71 Chevy B tipping non stop. Sounding like Trick Williams on the block. So you know we can't stop. We be banging through your speakers. You can tune into my show and I'm a teacher. Wayne Breezy, the phone I preacher. We so bright that we shine.